All right, welcome. Uh, this circuit will take a look at a cascade of op amps. Uh, looks a little complicated, but really it isn't. Uh, so whenever you have a cascade like this, uh, the thing to keep in mind is that each op amp acts as an individual stays. So you can actually break this problem down. Uh, uh, we can pro break this problem down into multiple smaller chunks. Uh, so let's tackle this problem here. Okay. All right. So first thing we do is look at the circuit and see that we have three different stages of op amp. Here is a type of op amp right there. Here's another op amp. And then here's the third op amp circuit. So we'll, we'll take an approach of analyzing each of these circuits individually. So let's start with the first one. So here, right here, uh, we see that it has a negative feedback, so we can use ideal op amp. And just to recall, ideal op amp basically says no current goes into the uh, inverting and the non-inverting uh, terminals, as well as the voltage at this node and the voltage at that node are the same. So in this circuit right here, the voltage, so here's a ground, is a four volt source. So the voltage at that end is equal to four volts. Because of this ideal op amp uh, rule, the voltage at this node right here is also four volts. And since there is a straight wire connection to the output, that node becomes four volts. So this circuit right here has four volts at both the input and the output side. And if you if you are good at memorizing op amp topology, this particular op amp topology is actually called a voltage follower. Right? So this is called the voltage follower topology. Now let's take a look at the second circuit right here. So second circuit also has a negative feedback. It is, uh, we can use the ideal op amp uh, rules again to help simplify it. Now if you are again uh, a master at recognizing op amp topologies, in fact this op amp topology right here is an inverting amplifier. So it's an inverting amplifier with a 3 volt input source, 10 ohm input resistance and a 50 ohm feedback resistance. So the, if you memorize the inverting uh, amplifier topology, the feedback uh, resistance over the input resistance is five, so that's the gain. So five times three is 15, the input voltage was three and the gain was five, so 15. And since it's inverts, the output we expect here is actually negative 15. Well, I am not a big proponent of memorizing op amp topology, so let's take a quick look uh, and try to analyze the circuit using simple op amp rules and Kirchhoff's current law that always works. So based on, so let me just label some currents and op amp, ideal op amp rule says the voltage at this node and voltage at that node are the same. So that node, particular node right there is going to be equal to zero volts. Now I1 equals I2 at that node because the current going in equals current coming out according to Kirchhoff's current law. So I1 equals I2. So let's see, I1 is from three volts towards zero through the 10K. I2 is from zero to VB through the 50k, so let's write that down. 3 minus 0 over 10,000 equals 0 minus VB over 50,000. Now if we simplify this, we get basically VB equals negative 15, exactly as we had expected. So we've solved two circuits now, and we have the third circuit left. Now the third circuit, this one right here, for those who are trained, you might see that this is actually a summing amplifier. So it's an inverting summing amplifier. Okay, so basically based on the input voltage at two ends and the ratio of these feedback. Okay, so this four volts will have four times the influence. This negative 15 will have two times the influence. Uh, and the output voltage will be dependent based on these uh, weighted sums. But again, uh, not wanting to memorize things, let's just use ideal op amp rule and say, uh, Label the directions of the currents, I3, I4, and I5 arbitrarily. And let's use the op amp rule and say zero volts right here on the plus side, so zero volts at this node. Let's our, apply Kirchhoff's current law at that node right there, which says I3 plus I4, two currents going in equals I5, which is going out. Uh, I3 is four minus zero divided by 20,000. I4 is negative 15 minus zero divided by 30,000. And I5 is zero minus V out divided by 60,000. So if we simplify that, that's what we get. And as we further use algebra to simplify it, we end up with V out equals 18 volts. So that's how you can take a large complicated circuit like this and break it into individual op amp stages. And they all turn out to be extremely simple in this case.